सो स्टेम सेल्स आर द सेल्स विच आर द प्रोजनेटर सेल्स मतलब द वन विच मेक ऑल द अदर सेल्स इन द ब्लड दैट सर्व वेरियस फंक्शन द स्टेम सेल्स लिव इन साइड द बोन मैरो एंड दे आर लाइक द फैक्ट्री बोन मैरो इज लाइक द फैक्ट्री वेयर ऑल द सेल्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड सो बोन मैरो प्रोड्यूज आर रेड सेल्स विच आर वेरी यूजफुल इन ट्रांसपोर्टिंग ऑक्सीजन अराउंड द ब्लड एंड दैट्स वॉट मेक्स अस मेक्स आर ब्लड रेड Uh, they also make uh, white cells which help it, help us in fight infections and then finally they also make cells called platelets which are small little cells uh, which help us in preventing bleeding and bruising so bone marrow transplant was the term originally used when transplant was developed 40 50 years ago and in those days we used to extract the bone marrow from the donor and then transfuse it to the patient Uh, but then as time passed we found that we could get the stem cells from the peripheral blood itself and we don't need to poke needles into the bone marrow which has its own complications uh, which means now we can give some injections to the patients or the donor and get the stem cells to come into the peripheral blood and from the blood uh, we can pick up these stem cells and filter them out uh, from a procedure called uh, apheresis and that procedure helps us in collecting the stem cells from a patient or a donor and keeping them safe for ready for a transfusion so bone marrow transplant is a procedure which is usually done which kind of replaces the patient's diseased bone marrow with the donor's new healthy bone marrow and bone marrow transplant as a term uh, is a very old term and it's being replaced by a term called stem cell transplant now because essentially what we're doing is using these stem cells to replace it with the stem cells of the patients which are diseased and giving healthy stem cells to the patient so that these get cells go and implant in the bone marrow now in the olden times we used to take this bone marrow out of the uh, a patient or the donor uh, and then transfuse it back after chemotherapy Uh, but now we can take these stem cells from the peripheral blood uh, by a procedure called apheresis and then we give the patient chemotherapy or radiation or a combination of both and then transfuse the peripheral blood stem cells so that the patient's healthy bone marrow can then implant there are various types of bone marrow transplants that we should know of and one of them is Uh, called an autograft autograft is when the patient themselves are the donor an autograft is nothing but a, a good way to give intensive chemotherapy uh, to the patient so that their disease goes away but in the process of the disease going away that intensive chemotherapy also suppresses the bone marrow to an extent where the bone marrow will never recover so to prevent from that complication from happening we store the stem cells of the patients before we give them chemotherapy and then after the chemo is over and the effects of chemo is over we retransfuse those stem cells into the patient and that's called an autograft and we don't need a donor for such a transplant the other type of transplant that we need to know for about is an allograft and an allograft is a procedure where we use a donor stem cells to implant into the patient so that the disease goes away and the healthy bone marrow then takes over the whole process of making the blood now there are various types of allografts which are possible uh, one of the most common ones is the sibling match sibling donor transplant and in this type of transplant uh, the sibling of the patient which is either a brother or a sister uh, who is a full match can be used uh, to transplant the stem cells into the patient but what if the patient doesn't have a sibling and uh, still needs a transplant uh, there are registries um, all over the world which uh, take a blood sample from healthy volunteer voluntary donors uh, and then save their hla types within their database and if a patient needs a donor then we can match the patient's hla database or the patient's hla type to the worldwide donor registry database and then if we find a donor then we can go and track that donor and request him to donate the stem cells for the patient now what if 
the the chances of having such a donor available all over the world for a particular patient is about 25 to 30 percent, maybe even lower for Indian patients. And so, a special type of transplant is now gaining proper uh, uh, gaining. Uh, uh, prominence and that kind of transplant is called a haplotransplant and a haplotransplant just means that again we look back into the family and see if we can find a donor who is half match to the patient and if there is a donor who is a half match uh, then we have to modify the type of transplant so that that half match uh, stem cells can then take over uh, the place of fully matched stem cells and such tra transplants are now becoming more and more common. The complications is something that we need to be very aware of when we tell the patients and the patients need to be aware of the complications when we are talking about a transplant. Now the transplants are getting safer and safer now uh, but there are a few complications that we need to know about and one of the major complications uh, that is there which is specific to the transplant is called graft versus host disease and this is a complication uh, that happens when <clears throat> the donor's uh, stem cells come and start uh, making their own products into the patient's immune system. But then because the donor stem cells don't recognize the patient's body, uh, they mount an immune response against the patient's cells. Uh, and that's called graft versus host disease, which means the graft is mounting a response against the host. Now graft versus host disease usually is a minor complication and usually is something that the doctor wants uh, to a certain extent because graft versus host disease also controls or helps in controlling the disease of the patient. But sometimes the graft versus host disease uh, is severe uh, and causes damage to structures like the skin or the gut or the liver of the patient. Uh, in which case we have to give some medicines to calm down the graft versus host disease. The other major complication of the transplant that uh, the patients need to be aware of is uh, that the bone marrow will be very suppressed or the cells will almost go down to zero during the process of the transplant. Uh, and if that happens, then the patient's body is open to infections. Now, which is why the transplant units are built in such a way that the possibility of infection goes down substantially uh, and the food, water and air is very tightly controlled in such units and we allow very few people uh, to visit such units or visit patients in such units and minimize the footfall in such units. But despite all this, sometimes the patients can have an infection and uh, usually that infection comes from within the patient's body. Uh, in which case uh, we have to uh, give patients IV antibiotics and maybe even antifungal agents uh, to control such infections. During the transplant, uh, the patients should expect uh, to stay in the transplant unit for about a month. And during that time, uh, in the first week, they have preparation for a transplant. They will have um, a line put in, uh, usually a Hickman line which is a subcutaneous line that accesses one of the major veins. Uh, and the line is a very useful thing because we can take blood tests which are frequently muted during the transplant and we can give medicines to that. So the first week is usually a combination of chemotherapy and radiation therapy uh, and some medicines to prevent graft versus host disease. And then end of that week, we usually do the transplant, meaning we transfuse the stem cells usually through that very line. And once that happens, uh, it's a game of waiting and waiting for these stem cells to go into the bone marrow, find their space and start setting up shop and uh, start making the cells. During this time, uh, the patients can become unwell with infections or graft versus host disease or some other complications uh, for which they will need close monitoring and the transplant physician usually visits them twice a day uh, to uh, monitor the patient very closely uh, for such complications and for management of such complications.